Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop and uh, I have a mandolin that we're going to work on today and uh, I introduced this mandolin in my previous video. It came from West Virginia. Let me turn the camera down so you can see what we're talking about. It's the lower mandolin. I've taken the strings off of it and uh, I have uh, the bridge sitting here in the tailpiece. Uh, on the uh, tailpiece I put a piece of sticky uh, felt here and on the inside lid cover. That way when you put those together your strings are between the felt and they don't rattle. I talked to the customer and he wants me to do the what the old commercial said, the full meal deal. And uh, so we're going to do the full meal deal on this. And basically that means every single thing that I would recommend to do to this. Um, we're going to put a deer antler saddle on the top. That'll give it a lot more volume because this thing has a fairly woody tone anyway. So it should help the, help the instrument overall because it will increase the volume a lot. And this mandolin has the big frets, the oversized frets in it. Now I know I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers here. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, if you're a fan of the oversized frets, I'm not really knocking the oversized frets. I mean, I, I can see they have an advantage or two perhaps. The difference with the high frets and the low frets is simply the stress on your fingers. He, uh, he agreed. He, he wants me to take it out. He wants to make it easier to play. So I'm going to take these big frets out and I'm going to put the standard size frets in there. And uh, obviously that means we're going to have to work on the nut some too. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, once I put the new frets in it, I'll be uh, doing a fret leveling. So I'll uh, actually level all the frets and recrown them and uh, get them uh, just as perfectly level as we can. I've already tightened the truss rod. And just for the uh, customer's information uh, has the, about the truss rod, um, it was exactly backwards of what it should have been. And, and what I mean by that is um, it was really tight. The nut was really tight. And I thought, man, that thing's really tight. But what was happening, it was tight the wrong direction. It was tight. In other words, if you loosened it all the way, and then there must have been some sort of a place where when you loosened it far enough, it actually went tight again. And somebody had loosened it all the way and went to that tight point and then really tightened it down. So when I started to try to tighten it, it felt like it's already tight. And I'm going, wow, this thing is already really tight, but it doesn't look like it is based on the underbow. I mean, I'm going, man, it... With all that underbow there, it, it doesn't seem like it should be tight. So I put a little bit more stress on it to go to the tight side. In other words, righty, uh, tighty, lefty, loosey. You know, so I'm going right and I'm trying to tighten it a little bit, and all of a sudden it broke loose. And then it got completely loose. It just was totally loose. And I thought, uh oh, I hope I didn't break it. But then I kept going, and finally I got to where it tightened up against the uh, the uh, tensioner in there, and. And I turned a little bit more and tighten. I could and I could visually see the bow coming out of the neck. So yeah, it worked. It worked fine, no problem whatsoever. But uh, like I said, it was completely opposite of what it should have been. Yeah, I've got some hot water in this pan right here, and I'm just going to literally paint it right around each fret. Um, hopefully, it'll soak in just a little bit. And I have a specialty tool that I made for pulling frets. Basically, it's just a pair of wire cutters that I have ground the end completely flat so that the, it's just a micro fine edge that's touching there when you clamp them together. And that allows me to get in very close to the fret and work this under the fret and uh, doesn't do any damage to the fretboard. And that one came out perfectly clean. Not a bit of chipping at all, which is a miracle. And that didn't do any damage to the fretboard at all. I'm just totally and completely amazed. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is these all have they don't have the ends exposed here. Um, I mean, they're nipped off. I don't have a fret nipper like that either.
Okay, we've got all of the frets uh, installed. It took about 45 minutes to file off all those and install them in the fretboard, which wasn't too terribly bad. Now we're going to have to uh, file the ends of all the frets. And what I'm going to do is just go very lightly across here. This tool really gives me really good control. Okay, I have all the frets re-leveled and re-crowned, and I just repolished all of them with 600 uh, wet or dry sandpaper so they're real smooth and shiny really feel slick now and of course that leaves a mess on the fretboard so what I do is I take a single edge razor blade and I get in here and I scrape this out and I do that I'm going to do this anyway so that that's why I don't care if that scuff gets on the fretboard Then I just clean it all off real good. And then I oiled the fingerboard and now you have a perfectly level and brand new looking fingerboard. There's been a lot of controversy about me using linseed oil, but it's been used for hundreds of years on instruments, so you know, I like it. I think it does a great job. I don't think it leaves any residue on the uh, fretboard at all. Hey, just a side note, I just noticed something. <clears throat> I can tell by this that the bridge, the saddle, was backwards on this mandolin. The uh, E side has been cut with the big wide grooves for the G string, and the G side has been cut with the skinny grooves for the E string. And there, there is the new deer antler saddle that we're going to put on there, and we will cut the uh, string slots to match. I'm going to make sure that the feet match the top of the mandolin really, really good. As a matter of fact, one of the ways to do that is you can lay a piece of sandpaper on here and you hold the sandpaper really still so it doesn't move because you don't want to scratch your top of your mandolin. And then you just wiggle this back and forth a little bit like this. I like to leave the saddle on there to help hold on to it and keep it straight. The, uh, the bridge itself is made out of uh, ebony and the, the fr fretboard is rosewood. Oftentimes those match. I'm not a stickler on that myself about making those match. I, don't I would prefer the ebony bridge myself so over the fact that they match or don't match. So I'm going to leave it this way. That looks good. And I always, uh, after I oil it like that too, I go back through later and wipe it one more time with just the residue of the oil on here. Um, just, it just makes it look good, cleans it up real nice. And then I dry it off again. Looks real good. Looks like brand new from the factory. Okay. Um, now, I've got a little jig I made to cut the string slots in this, so I'm going to go ahead and find that. Here it is. It's, it's a really simple little jig. It's just got notches in it. And I basically just lay this right underneath there and center it up, and then I just mark it with a pencil, and then I just file those grooves in there. These are uh, GHS, and I'm going to try silk and steel on this mandolin. I think that's going to bring out the tone a little bit better on this particular mandolin. I haven't checked the intonation yet or anything, so I just thought I'd show you my process. First thing I do is I look down it and make sure that the strings are pretty well equally spaced, and they look pretty good. I put the bridge approximately where I think it goes, and uh, then I will tune up. I'll turn on my... I just I like to use the bench tuner for this. It's just handy. I don't have to have it hooked onto the peg head. And uh, I'll bring this on up pretty close to the pitch. It doesn't really matter if it's the exact pitch or not, really. I'll go to F sharp right now just, just to keep a little tension off. And that's pretty close. And then I'll note it. Hair sharp. So that means this is too short. If it's sharp, it's short. So I just back it up a little bit. Check that string again. 12th fret. Double 
check it. Still sharp. Still 10 cent sharp, so it's, it's quite a little bit sharp there, so I'm going to back it up some more. Perfect. So now I'll take the bottom E string. Perfect. Okay, so I got the top string. I'll double check the top one, make sure I didn't move it. Perfect. Okay, so the when you get the outside strings perfect on intonation, the rest of them pretty much fall in place. Okay, got her tuned up relatively close. It's not perfect, but and these new strings are going to stretch a while anyway. It's uh. Not bad, but the action's crazy high, of course. It was already high before, and now it's crazy high because we've got the smaller frets on here. So, we're going to work on the uh, nut up here. I'll be cutting that down, and uh, what I use to cut it down is a saw. Um, I actually use this fret saw, and uh, I will use it like a file in those slots and cut them down, and uh, I'll bring you back as I get this all uh, set up just perfect. Oh, I've spent another 30 or 40 minutes off camera tweaking it just a little bit. I'll tell you what I did. I, uh, after I got the action up here just right and, and got it noting pretty good, well, then the action back here was still too high. So I took the uh, bridge, I loosened all the strings, took the bridge out, broke a string in the process, had to put a new string on it. And anyway, I uh, filed some bot the bottom off of the saddle here so that it would sit down a little further. But then the posts were too tall, so I had to file the posts off. Anyway, I've adjusted it now, and uh, it holds a pick at the 7th fret real good, at the 8th fret almost. And uh, that's kind of my standard. It's a 1.14 millimeter pick. So uh, if it holds a pick at the 7th uh, fret, it notes really easy. <laughs> Really, really easy to play now. I checked the intonation again. I made everything, you know, made sure it's in the center and just, just double checked everything. And uh, it's set up just about as perfect as it can be set up, I believe. And uh, really plays, really plays easy. Well, there you have it. Hope you've enjoyed this little video on how to set up a lower mandolin and uh, what I go through to get them just as good as they can be.